Philippians chapter 2. <clears throat> it was Christmas Eve, 1910. General William Booth, the founder of the Salvation Army, was an invalid and near the end of his life. It was impossible for him to attend the Army's annual convention. Someone near the general suggested that Booth send a telegram to be read at the opening of the convention to the many Salvation Army soldiers in attendance as an encouragement for their many hours of labor serving others throughout the holidays and the cold winter months, and Booth agreed. Funds were limited and telegrams charged by the word, so to ensure as much money as possible would still go to help the needy, General Booth decided to send a one-word message. He searched his mind and reviewed his years of ministry, seeking the one word that would summarize his life and the mission of the army and encourage the soldiers to continue on. When the thousands of delegates met, the moderator announced that Booth could not be present due to his failing health. Gloom and pessimism swept across the convention floor until the moderator announced that Booth had sent a telegram to be read at the start of the first session. He opened the message and read just one word. Others. Signed, General Booth. That's what the beginning of the Salvation Army was all about. Yeah. And I don't know what it is today. I've never checked into that. I'm sure it has drifted somewhat from the original purpose. But in the beginning, it was all about salvation to the lost. And that was his, General William Booth, that was his mindset. In Philippians chapter 2, I believe this might be where he adopted this mindset. He says in verse 3, Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. Mm. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Let's pray. Father, thank You for Your Word, and I do pray that tonight that You would speak through me the message that Your people need to hear. Father, I pray that You would help us to adopt the same mindset that Jesus had. And that is thinking about others. Lord, I pray that You would convict our hearts, especially mine, so that we won't be so selfish and self-centered. Lord, help us. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. How many of you have heard the story of this particular story of William Booth? A few of you. Um, I've heard it a little bit differently uh, before. But when you consider the word others, yeah. and then you try to plug that into our life, many times it don't fit. Mm. And the reason is we are all about ourselves. <clears throat> we are to adopt this mindset of Jesus. In verse 
the same chapter in verse 21, <clears throat> Paul said this, For all seek their own, not the things which are Jesus Christ. Mm. Notice that he said all, not most. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> That's you and I as well. I know we probably have little spurts every once in a while of time where we do something for others, but then when you consider the other 99% of our day, mm. it's all about us. <clears throat> How much of your day is spent thinking about and doing for others? What about today? Mm. What about yesterday or the day before? What did you do on Thursday for others, for somebody else? Mm. <clears throat> Most, if not all, of our days encompass our needs mm. and our wants. So what happens when we aren't thinking about the needs of others and how to meet those needs? We remain focused on ourselves. Right? Yeah. <clears throat> this causes a problem. Look back in verse 3. <clears throat> Paul said here, Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. The biggest reasons that we have problems in our relationships with other people is pride. Yeah. There's absolutely no way you can have a healthy, meaningful relationship with someone else while being proud, proud at the same time. Mm. <clears throat> it always gets in the way. Have you ever tried to take two magnets mm. and put the north end to the north end of the other magnet? You know what happens, right? I went in the office of this person the other day and they had this thing sitting on their on their table I think it was one of those Alexas but hovering mm. above it was this ball of some sort and it was just sitting there in midair anybody ever seen that? Vicki you've seen that? I looked at that and said <laughs> and, I, and I tried to look at it from a couple of different angles I said how is that happening? she said it's magnets and then I realized what it was. She said, but if you, if you, when you put it over it, if you don't get it just right, it just falls right off. But if you get it just right, it'll just sit right there above this thing. Well, that's what happens. There, what it is is the, there are two magnets in there that are repelling each other. So it makes it sit up above the, the, the other piece. Well, that's how pride works yeah. with our relationships with each other. Yeah. When proud, when pride is running rampant in our life, we are struggling in our relationships with people. Mm -hmm. People that we're close to, people that we're not close to. People that we meet in the store, people that we meet on the road. Yep. We are struggling in our relationship with those people, not because of what they're doing, mm. not because of what they're saying, but because of the pride inside. That's what he's saying right here in verse 3. <clears throat> Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. Now, <clears throat> Paul tells us here to esteem them better than yourself. Yes. Yeah. Esteem means to hold high regard for their worth or value. Mm -hmm. If the people that you struggle with don't seem to have much worth or value, you probably have too much for yourself. Mm. I was listening to this pre preacher on the radio the other day, and he was talking about this subject. And he said... This is how you esteem other people better than yourself. 
He says, first of all, you have to consider what do you know about that person? All you know about that person is what you see and what you hear. Amen. And then it stops right there. That's right. Now what do you know about yourself? Mm. We know what we think. We know what feelings we have that never even exit our mouth. Mm. And that list ain't pretty. Right. In other words, I know more bad things about me than I do about anybody else. So just because I learned one bad thing about you doesn't make me better than you. Because I still have those thousands and thousands of things that I know about myself that ain't good. All I know about you that was bad was that one thing. So I can esteem other people better than myself because I'm a pretty rotten person. Remember what Charles Spurgeon said? If a man speak evil of you, do not be angry with him, for you are worse than he thinks you to be. But for some reason, when that one thing comes up that they want to accuse us of, and granted, may be incorrect, but when that one thing comes up that they want to accuse you or me of, we want to get up in arms about it. We want to put this to an end. We want to straighten this out and correct this problem. <clears throat> but what about the things that they don't know about us that we don't want them to know about us? We can esteem other people better than ourselves. And when we're struggling with it, the whole problem is is we've already esteemed ourselves too highly. Mm-hmm. It's much easier to give in to their wants or needs when you esteem them better than yourself. So how did Jesus do it? Look back in verse 4. How did He humble Himself? Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. So what did He do? Who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made Himself of no reputation, and took upon Him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. I mean, think about that. Jesus is God. Yeah, Amen. He created the universe. Amen. But at this frame of time, He came to earth as a baby. Yeah. Living in a poor family. Mm. Laid in a cow trough. Yeah. As a man, He was a pauper and homeless. Mm. And he did all this on purpose. He didn't have to do that. Mm -mm. He could have been born in the palace. He could have rode on a white stallion everywhere he went. I mean, he he could have done whatever he wanted to. He was God. But he chose to humble himself. In other words, it was deliberate. Mm Mm-hmm. And if it's going to happen to me or you, it's going to have to be deliberate. Mm. It ain't going to happen on on accident because our nature is to be selfish. Mm. Our nature is to look out for number one. Not you, but me. I go to work, earn money, pay my bills, not yours. That's wrong thinking. Mm. So here's my challenge. Think of someone that needs some help or encouragement. Mm. Now, you don't have to raise your hand right there, but do you know anybody like that? Yes. 
If you don't, just think about it for a few more seconds and there, that person will probably come to mind. Just yesterday, Brother Tommy challenged us and in, in, in the group that, that went out so winning to make a phone call, make a visit, send a card or whatever to some of these elderly that have not been able to make it to church. They need encouragement. They're discouraged. Yeah. Amen. They don't get fellowship every week like you and I do. No. Well, by the way, that's needed. Yeah. We need that. All of us need Amen. that. That's part of the reason we come to church. It's not the whole reason, but it's part of it. That's right. So think of that person who needs help or encouragement. You got that person in your mind? So the next step is to do it. Make a phone call. Send a message. Send a letter. Now, I don't know if any of you have written letters recently. I know that has become archaic, but I can tell you this. Everybody still likes to get a letter in the mail. Mm. I went to my mother's house, my mom and dad's house, years ago, and we sat there on the front porch. We were talking. She was probably shelling peas. I don't remember. We were only there for about an hour. And while we were there for that hour, she got up three times and went to the mailbox. And finally I said, Mom, are you expecting a letter? She says, well, it normally runs about this time and I, I just wanted to see what was in the mailbox. Not really expecting anything, but she was. Mm. She was expecting or hoping to get a letter from somebody. Mm. Now I think this was before cell phones. So it wasn't a matter of just making a phone call real quick or easy or a text. Back then, they depended on letters yeah. to get some information. And I got convicted at that time and I began to write my mom and dad a letter as often as I could think about it, mm. which was several times throughout the year, just so that she could walk to the mailbox and her eyebrows go up when she saw that letter. Amen. We still like letters. I like them. Amen. I like it when somebody sends me a letter. It means more than a text. Yeah. Why? Because it takes more time. Mm -hmm. Which, by the way, that leads to the second part of this challenge. This person that you're thinking of that needs help or encouragement, go to their house. This week. And by the way, if you're struggling to figure out at what phase of this week that you're going to make this happen, that's another red flag. Mm. If we can't make time to help and encourage others, mm. we're too busy. Or else we're just too selfish. Yeah. <clears throat> Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. Mm. Others. Back in the early 1900s, General William Booth started a ministry that is still going strong today all across the world. Yeah. And it was built on this one word, others. Mm. <clears throat> What are we doing for others? Remember the challenge. Think of that person that needs encouragement or needs help with something. And go help them. Load your lawnmower in the back of your truck or your car yeah. or whatever and go over there and mow their grass because yeah. they can't or they have trouble doing it. You say, well, I don't even know what they need for help. That's another red flag. Mm. We should. Especially when God puts them in our heart, right? Right. When God puts somebody on your heart and you're thinking about that person, that's not an accident. God is trying to say, hey, they need some help. Yeah. They need your encouragement. 
at least pray for them. Yes, sir. But go to them and help them. Encourage them. Again, maybe just a letter. If you can even remember how to do that, you write your, your address and your name on the top left-hand corner of the letter, their address in the middle, and you have to put a stamp on the right top-hand corner of the envelope. Mm-hmm. And then stick it in the mailbox. <coughs> oh, and write a letter and put yeah. it inside that envelope. <laughs> <coughs> Might even put a little check for some, some small amount of money in there. I like letters, but I really like them that have checks in them. We all need encouragement. Yes. And there are people who are very likely on the brink of disaster mm. waiting on your encouragement. Mm. Go to them this week. And by the way, don't stop this week. This is a mindset that God is telling us to adopt. Yes. Not for just today or this week. Yes. But forever. Yeah. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for your word. And Lord, it is not our nature to think of others and their needs. But Lord, please help us to adopt this mindset because that's your mindset. Father, I thank you thank you for thinking about us yeah. and our need mm-hmm. and sending Jesus to meet that need. Lord, I pray that You would help us to adopt this mindset. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's stand in front of a 470.